It's not that I'm tired of playing Souls and Souls-like games, it's the volume at which similar games are being released. And I just watched the trailer of Black Myth Wukong and I'm super excited for this game to come out and I understand that it doesn't have all the features of your traditional Souls game, but the way that the trailers are presenting itself, it just has that similar scope of, you know, over the shoulder, the rolling, right? The battles look epic, which is the reason why I play these kind of games. But man, like I'm totally gonna buy it, but man, I am just like... It's just this fatigue just hits different you know it, i'm at the point where there have been so many so many similar games that have released uh in the past couple of years uh, this subgenre has become so popular uh, it feels like almost every major studio is trying to release their own version of this genre right it's games like elden ring all trying to match that game and have big success and win all these rewards but when i see another souls like game my mind just goes oh man like another one oh man i might have to wait you know like i'm probably gonna get it in the long run but at the moment like i am just so good on that at the moment double kill okay. Again, this fatigue just hits different. I know they're going to be good games. I know they're going to be worth my time. That's why these games exist, right? That's why this genre exists. But is this the result of too much of a good thing? It, it just seems like each game in this subgenre that comes out, their influence really shows. And those like games are supposed to be more palatable versions of the OG. But is it though? Are they just knockoffs? It's starting to become difficult to justify my purchases, especially with games that play very similarly to each other, especially from software games. It's crazy to me that there are gamers that can clear three to four Souls, Souls like games a year. Respect. Big respect. That's what I'm trying to get on. But with high replayability and serious commitment, these genres are not for the light of heart. But really quick, let's clarify what a Souls like is. By definition, a Souls like game is a subgenre of action role playing games known for high levels of difficulty and emphasis on environmental storytelling. Typically in a dark fantasy setting, it's essentially a hardcore version of action adventure RPGs, right? You lose all your runes, kind of have to repair all your gear, right? There, there really is no hand holding in the game. And let's be real, these games have been popular for a long time. You know, the hardcore players, the OG Souls players, it's almost like a fight club. You know, you don't talk about being a Souls player among non-Souls players, right? Which is how this Souls-like genre kind of formed, right? Trying to release this genre to the masses outside of the From Software titles that, as we're familiar, are all pain and gain. Recently, I believe Elden Ring was the initial game that opened the gates to the general population, right? To the casual fans, to the Call of Duty bros, to the Sims 4 legends. Due to the grand nature of the open world, you can customize your player. There is so much lore that people are quite literally making a living out of making videos on Elden Ring lore. It's insane, right? It checks all those boxes of a big blockbuster game. Why wouldn't you be at least curious about a game like Elden Ring? Overall reception during launch was great, even when players didn't like it. It's almost like a compliment to say, no, I played it, but I didn't like it because it was too hard. Like that in and of itself already shows that this game is not for everyone. This game is not for everyone, but it was still able to garner interest from players who like what the game is about the open world dark fantasy right big boss battles who which gamer isn't interested in shit like that right it's it's hard to to put down that kind of marketing 
And you know what? I know that there was obviously innovative titles from Firm Software before Elden Ring, but for us new, newer folks and the gaming population in general, Elden Ring just feels like the Gatelyn Clark of Souls gaming. The new young Hooper getting all the attention for innovating the game while all the older games feel like they get no love. Meanwhile, all these innovations that this young Hooper is getting credit for had been done in previous generations. Hmm. <laughs> anyway, anyway. It feels like studios are finally catching up to the trend. And in classic fashion, it's always way after it's popping off, right? But what keeps gamers, players engaged in this subgenre, right? For me, personally, outside of it being cool as hell, it's the need for repeated playthroughs, which can be viewed as like a self-improvement, you know, for the player, pain and gain, right? Through gradual improvement of your character that you yourself customized, improving your skill set and strategies by being resilient and persistent by fighting those bosses over and over again to find out what is actually working. Part of the challenge is the reward you receive from grinding and pushing past your limits. Right? What other game genre does this? 2K doesn't do this. You know what I mean? Call of Duty doesn't do this. Right? On a business level, on like an executive level, this can also be close to that forever game these high level executives keep talking about and want, but without the need for weekly content updates, to no one's surprise, a lack of microtransactions. Funny that a game with so much depth, no extra cash needed, can be played over and over and over again. Funny, right? Look, while Souls-like games definitely have had a significant impact on the gaming industry, the growing fatigue comes from the oversaturation, the repetitive mechanics, and the time it requires to identify those first two that I just mentioned. And the other side of this is that since these games have such high replayability, whether good or bad, right? There's always some extra stuff added in. More often than not, you're probably going to be purchasing this because of your curiosity and that it's going to be a game that's going to stay with you for the long run, right? It's probably going to sit in your backlog for a little bit. That's just kind of how I look at it. Uh, which kind of contributes to the fatigue. It's like, oh, I gotta play another Souls-like game, you know? <laughs> but I believe part of that fatigue, right, in identifying the, the, the repetitiveness and the oversaturation, right, what, what goes into that? Difficult combat and high stakes, the high risk, high reward factor in combat, is that available in the game? Exploration and interconnected world design. Does everything make sense when you walk out, right? What is the world that you're walking into, right? Can you see drips of lore that is going to, that is going to peak interest for gamers and players to look at that mountain that's across uh, the map that they can see, right? What's what's going to keep you moving forward, right? And lastly, storytelling through environmental clues with minimal dialogue aka all these three points the game isn't gonna tell you shit like these games will not hold your hand but that's part of the discoverability there's a formula clearly and most related games are following the same formula which then contributes to all the games kind of looking and playing the same right so what's happening what how has this genre evolved since the last four years that that Elden Ring has come out and we start seeing studios catch up with their own versions and releases. Those likes are changing basically by prioritizing different sides of what makes a Souls game, right? Rather than sticking with the traditional style of combat, you're seeing more high impact action over the 
hit dodge hit dodge mechanic if that's how you play lies of p a great example of a souls-like game that is pushing the genre forward by not incorporate by not only excuse me incorporating the aspects of what makes a souls like but then making it their own with the rendition of their story of pinocchio and the world that surrounds it however if you're gonna deem your game a souls like game i'm gonna leave it to the hardcore community to see whether or not it's worth what? checking out this genre right soul souls like whatever the fuck you want to call it it's one of the three reasons why i have been getting back into gaming that pain and gain, that risk and reward, the progress you feel, the sense of accomplishment that you receive, uh, no other title, no other genre is really going to do that for you, right? However, it's also the main reason why I haven't picked up uh, another Souls game, Souls-like game, since Elden Ring. You know, whether it's on Xbox Game Pass or I try a Rise, demo, militia, I have yet to make Rise. a full purchase of a, uh, a game in the genre. So what do we do now? Now that Terrifying. we understand why that there is so much fatigue in the industry with souls like games. What do we do now? What do we do here? The beautiful thing about these games is the return you receive when you're progressing through the challenge. True progress comes from the grind. Just like in real life. Put it down, set it aside, and come back to it later. <laughs> All that to say, if you want to see me get good, catch you on the stream here. If you want more mead, like and sub. Thanks again, and uh, I'll catch you guys later. Peace.